The striking and sleek image of the towering starship, lifting off brilliantly in April, left countless fans in awe. It wasn't just the sheer power of the starship that drew admiration, but also its outer beauty that garnished high praise. Starship looked like a colossal blue whale with sleek and shiny skin, and we can't find any traces of it. But if you've been following Starship from the beginning, you'd know that the first Starship prototypes were incredibly rough and unrefined. Let's take an in-depth look at how SpaceX mastered the Starship's welding in this episode of Alpha Tech. In the genesis of the Starship project, SpaceX envisioned a spacecraft crafted from lightweight carbon fiber. The potential of harnessing carbon fiber, renowned for its exceptional strength-to-weight ratio, seemed to herald a promising future for the Starship. However, after an extensive research process, winds of change swept through SpaceX's vision. Although carbon fiber boasts light weightiness, it began to break down at around 200 degrees Celsius. Consequently, it would necessitate an exceedingly thick heat shield to withstand temperatures of 1600 degrees during multiple re-entries. Ultimately, a momentous decision altered the course of the project. SpaceX opted to employ stainless steel, an economic material costing only $3 a kilogram, in stark contrast to carbon staggering $150 a kilogram. Despite being heavier, stainless steel boasted higher durability, capable of enduring three times the heat that carbon could withstand. Furthermore, the production of composite carbon materials requires meticulous layering of fibers to create multidirectional strength, followed by processing within immensely pressurized ovens. For components as large as Starship's 9-meter segments, SpaceX would require an oven larger than currently anything existing on Earth. And this is where stainless steel really shines. It can be swiftly joined together using basic and cost-effective methods. Thus, SpaceX embarked on creating the world's brightest rocket. However, for some reason, it didn't turn out to be quite as shiny. Due to the exceptional heat retention capabilities of stainless steel, it posed a significant challenge in the welding process, a pivotal component in space vehicle fabrication. Welding stainless steel demands a high level of expertise and precision, serving as a rigorous test of skill even for the most experienced welders. Furthermore, the inherent non-recoverable nature of the metal leaves no room for imperfections, eliminating any margin of error or subpar craftsmanship. This is why initially, the welding process for Starship posed challenges for SpaceX due to their limited welding experience. The first versions of the Starship used a welding technique called flux core. This method involves passing an electric current through a wire, creating a spark between the wire and the metal, and then melting them together. This melted metal fills any gaps or imperfections. In flux core welding, the wire is wrapped in a material that burns to release a protective gas. This gas shields the weld from oxygen in the air, which can cause rust. This works well in controlled environments. But SpaceX faced challenges because they were working in a large tent, not a proper factory. Many welds were done by inexperienced workers outdoors, leading to less than optimal results for the Starship's appearance. The welds on the first prototype, called Mark I, showed signs of corrosion, cracks, and rough edges. To improve them, SpaceX ground down the welds until they were smooth with the surface. This wasn't just for looks, it actually made the welds stronger. Those sharp edges and small cracks could have caused bigger problems once the Starship got pressurized. Grinding down the surface removed these issues and lowered the risk of the welds failing. Ideally, each weld needs to be as strong as the surrounding metal. However, the first Starship test revealed that this wasn't the case. The Mark I prototype exploded because of a failed horizontal weld that sent a bulkhead flying. So to address these challenges, SpaceX made improvements for the next prototype, the SN1. They used thinner sheets of stainless steel for each ring, which requires less welding. They also moved from 301 to 304L stainless steel, which was much more resistant to corrosion when welding. At this time, they also upgraded to TIP-TIG welding, which allowed them to better control the welding pool. This enabled the welders to tighten their work and penetrate the metal more deeply. With fewer individual welds needed to connect the spacecraft's parts, the risk of failure decreased significantly. 
Each weld now showcased the precision and meticulousness that characterized Starship's construction. SpaceX also acquired robotic welding machines from companies like Liberty and KUKA, similar to the ones seen in Tesla's factories. With these upgrades, SpaceX automated a significant portion of the process, resulting in cleaner and more precise welds. Additionally, they began incorporating more support structures within the Starship's body to prevent the metal from warping under its own weight. Next comes another astonishing welding method that contributes to Starship's awesome appearance. This method involves the use of an automated welding robot equipped with an upgraded friction stir welding control system. This version, invented by the Welding Institute Limited in the 90s, is the key factor that sets Starship apart from other rockets manufactured over the course of history. At its core, FSW employs a unique approach where metals are joined without undergoing the traditional melting process. Instead, a rotating tool with a specifically designed profile is plunged into the edges of the metal pieces to be welded. The friction generated by the tool's rotation generates a heat that softens the metal without fully liquefying it. As the tool traverses along the joint, it effectively fuses the metal, creating a seamless and incredibly strong bond. This process doesn't just eliminate the risks associated with molten metal, but it also results in a superior level of precision and structural integrity. The benefits of SSW extend far beyond its innovative methodology. The mechanical properties of FSW joints surpass those achieved through conventional welding methods. The absence of melting and solidifying ensures FSW welds are free from defects commonly associated with cooling and solidification processes. This translates to heightened fatigue strength, impressive tensile strength, and enhanced overall durability. Moreover, FSW generates minimal waste, making it an environmentally friendly choice while also improving the aesthetics of the welded surface. But SpaceX's innovations didn't stop there. The transition continued as SpaceX embraced laser welding for many sections of the Starship. Laser welding's concentrated heat penetrated deeper into the metal, allowing entire ring segments to be welded in a single pass. For further weld strength enhancement, an additional step was essential. This ties into a shift in Starship's construction approach. Instead of employing a complex process involving smaller rectangular steel panels meticulously welded together to create rings as in the original prototypes, SpaceX decided to directly utilize complete coils of steel. These coils were strategically positioned on specialized supports, resulting in a perfectly circular diameter of 9 meters. These rings underwent a process known as cold rolling. This process involves pressing the metal through rollers to compress it and elongate its grains, making it stronger. After the coiled wires are skillfully rolled and cut, the steel enters the final phase of transformation. Welding together individual steel segments seamlessly transforming them into a continuous and sturdy ring. But during the welding, the heat softens the metal in that area again. SpaceX introduced a massive planishing machine to address this. Planishing involves hammering down the welds until they match the hardness of the surrounding metal. This not only increased weld strength, but also improved their appearance. Following this, the steel rings, or what SpaceX often refers to as rings, are lifted onto a specialized fixture and stacked together, and then welded. This innovative approach not only saves assembly time, but also reduces the number of individual welds, thereby creating a more spacious production environment for Starship. Finally, all the welding methods that SpaceX has employed have yielded a proper process for the Starship. It's demonstrated aesthetics and durability, especially in the maiden orbital test launch of the Starship a massive and shiny spacecraft that remains structurally intact despite the vibrations and intense stresses as it passed through Max-Q. Either way, SpaceX is putting everything into the Starship. Look forward to the next launch, as it promises to wow us all. What is the highest peak of the aerospace industry? If that peak is understood in figurative meaning, we'll probably need more time to find out the answer. But if we talk about the peak in literal meaning, the answer is extremely clear. It's on top of the Starship, the largest rocket in the world today. It's a proud title that SpaceX has had in their history. To get the current giant prototype, SpaceX has many improvements and upgrades. 
During the development of Starship, the nose cone, which creates the top of Starship as mentioned above, is one of the parts that has many notable changes. It can be said that the changes are extremely unbelievable, unlike many other vehicles. So, how has the Starship nose cone changed throughout the vehicle's development? After creating stability and reliability for Falcon 9, the vehicle that will undertake orbital missions for SpaceX, such as launching satellites and delivering cargo to the ISS, SpaceX began developing larger and stronger vehicles for a bigger, further, and more difficult goal, Mars colonization. That is the Starship. It was being developed to be the world's largest rocket, which could carry up to 100 people to Mars. Indeed, with its current height of 122 meters, it surpassed the previous largest rocket's record of 111 meters, the Saturn V. This giant monster was created by combining many parts. In particular, the nose cone, the part located at the highest position of Starship, plays a very important role and it's also focused on upgrading since the first day Starship was created. After many years of development, in 2021, Elon officially revealed an interesting detail about the inspiration for designing the Starship nose cone. That's the movie The Dictator produced in 2012. In this movie, there was a scene where the authoritarian ruler, Admiral General Aladdin, played by Sasha Baron Cohen, was dissatisfied with the blunt head of the missile made by his engineers and required a pointed head. Thus, Musk decided to make it a priority, which is the nose cone shape we see today. Honestly, a pointed head is probably more beautiful and cool than a blunt one. But that's only a small reason for Elon's decision. Because the nose cone's placed on the top of the rocket, it'll be the leading part, directly subject to influence during flight like atmospheric resistance. A pointed nose cone will help modulate oncoming airflow behaviors and minimize aerodynamic drag better than nose cone with a rounded or blunt head. So, how have nose cones been changed or upgraded to get the current shape? Back in 2019, when the first infrastructure of the Starship project was built on the coast of Boca Chica, Texas, SpaceX also created the first primitive Starship prototype, Starhopper. When we look at this prototype, we'll see that it does not look like a rocket. Its top section has a rounded shape like the lid of a water tank, but it's just a primitive prototype created for testing purposes. The successful flight on August 27, 2019 set the basis for SpaceX to start creating prototypes like Elon Musk's previous plans. SpaceX then built the first nose cone for Starship with a conical structure, consisting of five steel rings that tapers gradually towards the top. That's been the official shape of the nose cone ever since. That first nose cone was created for Starship Mark I. However, it was never fully stacked on this prototype, but was only temporarily placed on top of the MK-1's tank section. After that, the nose cone was removed, and the tank section of this prototype was rolled to a nearby launch pad for testing. About half a year later, another nose cone was created for the SN5 prototype. Nevertheless, we didn't see it involved in the flight of the SN5 because after that, this SN5 prototype only flew with the tank section. Coming to the next prototype, SN8, that was the first time we saw a nose cone that was completely stacked Starship prototype. A special feature is that these nose cones have two flaps. These flaps have the function of directing Starship's flight and controlling complex movements such as belly maneuvering or vertically flipping when landing. It's like when we skydive. The arms will help control and adjust our posture. SN8's flight was also the first flight that a nose cone was involved in a Starship flight. The above design is the common design that has been applied since then. However, in the S20 prototype, the nose cone also had another notable addition, heat shields. Because Starship is designed to be reused. So, when it returns to Earth, it'll have to fly through the atmosphere, which will create strong drag and friction that can cause damage to the vehicle. Black hexagonal heat shields mounted on half the Starship reduce heat caused by friction with the air. Like the rest of the Starship, half of the nose cone is also designed to mount heat shields and help protect them from damage caused by high temperatures. In addition, compared to the previous design, the current nose cone has also had a change in manufacturing process. The first nose cones were all made up of five steel rings welded together that gradually tapered towards the top. These rings are also made up of a series of thin stamped steel. Therefore, it'll have lots of welds, causing a rough appearance with prominent welds at the surface. But with the current versions, the number of steel rings has been reduced from 5 to 2. Steel plates are also increased in size, thereby reducing the number of welds. Moreover, the old welding method is also replaced by a new fiber laser welding method, making the welds more precise, sturdy, and shiny. This upgrade will also make the nose cone more durable to withstand the effects of harsh environments during missions. In particular, after the S-20 was increased from 3 to 6 engines, SpaceX planned to move the methane header tank from the common dome to the nose cone, close to the liquid oxygen header tank that was previously placed there. 
This is expected to help direct the load towards the bow of the ship, thereby balancing the mass of the new engines installed at the stern. In the future, Elon and SpaceX engineers may come up with many new ideas to continue optimizing those cones. Until then, all the above upgrades are still the latest and most complete upgrades applied to most current prototypes. Wait, most of the prototypes. Why not all? Don't forget, there's one current prototype that's not completely similar to the rest, which is the S26. Basically, the main part of the S26 nose cone still has the same basic structure as other prototypes. However, it'll have two major changes. First, it doesn't have heat shields to protect the ship. The second change is the disappearance of the flaps on the nose cone. When it was created, many people wondered why the S26 had such a different design. The most suitable answer given is that the S26 is designed to carry fuel for the Starship space refueling process. It probably won't be reused like the other prototypes, so the heat shields aren't necessary. Besides, because there's no need to return to Earth, flaps, which serve belly maneuvers or vertical flips, are also unnecessary. Therefore, they'll be removed to cut down on excess weight. Instead, that weight will be used to increase the fuel payload it can carry to serve its main mission, refueling for other starships. However, without the above designs, the nose cone will still perform a very important task for the Starship S-26 in its mission. Modulate oncoming airflow and minimize aerodynamic drag. In short, no matter what the circumstances, the nose cone still plays a very special role in Starship prototypes. Currently, we usually won't pay much attention to the nose cone because it no longer changes regularly as other parts of Starship or launch support systems. Yet there it is, at the top of the world's largest rocket. In the future, Starship may have new upgrades, but the nose cone will still be an indispensable part of the rocket. It'll always play an extremely important role in every mission, like the head of the bullet, which will go before breaking all challenges to help SpaceX's giant rocket break all the limits in the universe. And that's all for today. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you to watch. Thank you for watching and see you next time.